Hi there, I'm Tracy Bowman with Bowman for Art on Facebook and T.A. Bowman Studios coming to you from Buzzards Bay. And today I thought I was going to do some resining. A lot of people are confused about it and don't know what to think. So I thought maybe if I make a little video showing you how I do it, um, you might really like it. Um, resin, I think, really gives a total different depth to your painting. Um, it has a nice, really shiny coat to it. And uh, I really love how it comes out. So um, I've recently done some coasters. Or not coasters, I'm sorry. These are six by six tiles. And I'm not a coaster person. So what I thought I would do is do these six by sixes and I'm going to put cork on the back of them with a little hook and some feet. And they're going to be um, a trivet. But in order to do that, I have to have a certain kind of resin. Not all resins can handle heat. So that's important. So today I'm going to use stone coat countertop resin. So this can handle the heat. And uh, so I thought I'd show you how I do that. So the tools that I'm going to need is just a simple industrial brush. So I buy these simple brushes. They're very inexpensive. I buy them by the box. You want to make sure you take the brush and scuff it up a little, make sure there aren't any bristles that are going to come out of that brush because you don't want them laying in your resin. A nice big wooden stick. And I do buy measured cups. I don't know if you can see that. Yep, measures by the ounce. So I want to make sure that, and by the millimeter. So I want to make sure I'm getting exactly the same amount of everything because measuring is everything when it comes to resin. If you don't have it measured right, it's not, it's not going to work right. So that's very important. Um, I use alcohol wipes, uh, the 70% alcohol, and I clean all of my tiles first before I put the resin on. Um, I also need another craft stick to make sure I clean up all my edges. All right, and some of my res some of my tiles, I'm thinking that a little bit of glitter in it would be really nice too. So I have this Let's Resin glitter. It's a fine white sparkly glitter that I would put in my resin. Um, actually, I'm gonna pour a little of the resin in this cup once it's all mixed and ready, then put the glitter in that and mix it up well and then just pour a little on, just to give it a little extra bling, but not on all of them anyway, at least not today. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put my hair back, and oh, and the most important part is a respirator. To uh, resin is toxic, you don't wanna be breathing it, you wanna make sure you have a well-ventilated area my studio is not in my home. It's separate from my house. And I've got a lot of windows and, uh, and sliding doors that I can open this up in a couple days. And uh, once it's cured and I can move them around um, so I can well ventilate this room out afterwards so I can come back in. So this is very important. You can pick them up at Home Depot or whatever hardware store you have, but you need to make sure that the, the filters that go in here are for resin. That's important. Not all respirators are equal or for the same reason or for the same thing. So it's very important to have a respirator that's for resin. So I'm gonna mix it up. I, I'm not sure how much I need, but I got a fair amount here. And if I have extra, I can put it on something else. So, 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 so. Do I want eight ounces? That's a lot. All right, I'll make, I'll start with six ounces of resin and see how far that takes me. Um, not all resins are the same. Some are what they call low viscosity 
and they'd be thinner than some others. I've never worked with this stone cold or stone coat countertop resin before. Um, so it will be new for me. Uh, I use all different kinds of resin. I'm not too particular, but when I buy it, I want to make sure that when I look at both parts, both parts, because they're an A and a B, okay, I want to make sure that they're clear. Some of them, yellow. Like I've gotten this particular one. And look at the color of that. I mean, they pretty much look clear when you, re when you mix them up, but it makes me feel a little suspect. So it, this one can go on one that has a lot of color that wouldn't necessarily bother it so much. Um, but these, um, there's a lot of whites in here. Uh, I'm going to, you know, and besides these ones, these tiles, you know, I want them to be able to put hot stuff on them. So that's why I'm using the countertop resin for sure, because it can handle the heat. So, <clears throat> oh, and I have my torch ready. Torch is also very important uh, to get the bubbles out. Um, if you don't want it to look like it's got little picks and pin holes in it, you need to have a torch. Okie doke. All right, I'll get to putting on my mask and I'll be mixing it up. I'll probably narrate the rest of the video because it'll be really hard to talk through a mask. It'll be kind of hard. You won't be able to hear me. <laughs> so I'll probably narrate the rest of it. <laughs> I hope you find this informative. And uh, I think the resin really is a cool thing. All right. So we'll get to you in a minute. Both of our parts, A and B, we need to mix, 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 mix. I, when I mix just a small amount like this, I mix for at least three minutes. I make sure that there aren't any swirls in it or whatever. Um, this particular kind of resin, it seemed to hold a lot of bubbles. So it had a kind of a, a white mixture to it, but that disappeared once it went down and the bubbles were gone. So mixing it very well is very important. On the side, I'm putting a little resin in this little cup of resin just to give a little extra bling to some of the paintings, um, which is kind of fun, um, especially with the resin. It makes it kind of really nice and blingy. So then we'll mix that up really well, and then I'll add it when I'm ready. Now we have a, a really good angle, so you can see it really well here. I'm just gonna pour on the resin, just like that, just pour it on. I'm gonna spread it out with the, the brush, bringing it all the way out to the edge. Resin is self-leveling, so you just try to get a nice coat on there. Making sure it's completely covered.
getting the sides. And giving it a torch. I will torch my resin pieces a few times before I let them sit and rest. Bubbles will continue to come to the surface, so I torch, I torch, and then I retorch. But now I have this wooden round ocean piece that I think that you'd like to see. Let me get you a good angle. Okay, so we gotta make sure that we clean your piece each time <clears throat> you want a resin. You gotta clean your piece really, really well with, I uh, use an alcohol wipe, 70% alcohol. Just by touching it, you could leave oils on the piece. So this way we make sure that the resin will adhere to the piece completely. So it's really important to do that to clean your piece first. The alcohol wipe dries right away. So now all you have to do is just pour it on. You can hear me breathing through that mask like I'm Darth Vader. <laughs> and again, we're just gonna brush it all out, getting a Nice coat on there. If it doesn't easily go all the way to the edge, we just pour some more on. Bringing it all out to the edge. making sure that it's completely covered. And then we torch. Once again. And that's really all there is to it. Now I'll go back and I'll check all the pieces, make sure that <clears throat> they don't have drips. It's important not to stay in any one place too long with that torch because it will burn. Oops, look at that. Not watching where I'm going. Fix that boo boo. There we go. All better. And again, I'm just pouring it on. I like to always leave just a little bit, tiny bit left in the cup, just in case there is a spot <clears throat> that I missed that I can just 
scoop a tiny bit out and put it on as just insurance. And the edges. So it's almost as easy as varnish, except you just have to have a special place to do it. And you have to be wearing one of those masks. Yep, scraping all the edges of all the paintings that I did. Sometimes you have to do that a few times, depending on your piece. The tiles and the wood are pretty flat, so they're easier. I find canvas can, because of the round edges, depending on the type of canvas you have, it can um, drip over the edge more. I did take a little bit of glitter and put it in the resin to give it a little extra sparkle. I think you can see it sparkling there. Oh, I'm torching some of the others again. It's important to read your directions carefully before you start. But that's all it is. Thank that's you. it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that Bye. video. Bye. Uh, so I now have done 10 pieces and three little magnets. And it's important to cover your pieces, especially if you have uh, forced hot air. So uh, thank you. Be sure to like and subscribe and see what comes next. All right. Thank you so much. Bye now.